This is the new Feutex Corp 2 and this is why you need a gimbal in 2024. I've had this gimbal now for about a month or so and I tested it within run and gun shoots, within commercial shoots. I tested the weight, I tested the portability, I tested every single side of this gimbal. Even though this video it is sponsored by Feutech, everything I'm going to talk about in this video is 100% my honest review. The Scorp 2 came out about two months ago and to be honest it has some of the most interesting and brand new feature I've ever seen in a gimbal. Coming in at 370 US dollars, this gimbal is perfectly priced within the same range compared to other brands. But to be honest, the weight and portability of this one is definitely the best out of them all. It boosts some pretty impressive AI features like subject tracking or even controlling the gimbal direction with your phone. But to be honest, the one that I found myself using the most, it's definitely this subject tracking. Being able to track a subject while walking forwards, for example, in a forest, it's something I always struggled with. Just keeping the gimbal straight and keeping the subject in the middle, it's always been very, very challenging. But now, all you gotta tell is your subject to do this motion. The gimbal recognizes it, goes into AI tracking mode, and now you can just simply walk and hold the gimbal and it will track the subject in the middle, which is amazing for some shots. The portability factor is definitely a very, very huge one for me because I live in Bali and I pretty much travel around the island with a tiny scooter, which means that I don't have much space under my seat. And being able to, if I want to, take this off and simply carry this around having these little legs, having these little legs over here that you can just unfold up, put the gimbal down, take the camera off, do something handheld, put the camera back on, take these legs off, start shooting again. This is actually a very, very interesting design that I absolutely love and I definitely use throughout my month that I've been using this. It's, it's actually very smart and I can't believe no one ever came up with this before. Now, as you guys know, I am a sucker for cine lenses and manual focus lenses. And when it comes to gimbal, it's a bit harder because you can't really just hold the gimbal and manual focus the lens unless you have a focus motor, which this has. So this little, little knob right here, you can actually set this up to either control the tilt, the pan, or to be your follow focus for the follow focus motor. And once I mounted this beast of a lens, which is the IRX 45 millimeter, which weighs like one and a half kilos, onto my Sony A7S III, which weighs like 700 grams with a cage on, this little guy still were able to handle the weight, which is actually pretty impressive for a gimbal of this size. And once you actually learn how to use the follow focus well, it's a super smooth setup to put it on, put it off, and you can run and gun this very easily with a follow focus motor, which is amazing for people like me who uses a lot the follow focus motor. It's got this little end on the back, which is actually the style of gimbals that I enjoy the most, just because it's just more comfortable to kind of hold. And if you want to go in underslung mode, you can just, you know, tilt your arm up and down. And you can go from a very low shot to a very high shot, a bit of a crane looking shot very easily. And even panning up and down, it's just a lot more comfortable of a gimbal to use overall. So the design factor is definitely incredible for me. Then there is a lot of like little buttons that you can personalize, like this AB button, there is F1 and F2. There is a little controller here, the record mode, if you wanna plug your camera with a USB-C cable into your gimbal. You have obviously the locking mechanism like most gimbals have right now. And what else is there? There is a little hole over here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll 
put some V-roll over it. But this little hole allows you to attach an extension and then you get two on each side screws that you can then apply a monitor or you can apply a, a microphone just as an external accessory, which is always, always good. I don't really shoot in portrait to be honest, but you can switch to portrait by either clicking in the menu into the portrait mode and the camera literally just goes vertical. But you have to hold it in a weird way like this to go vertical that way. Or you can remove the plate and set the camera vertical from the beginning. I honestly don't shoot vertical, but I would think that the best way to do it is having the camera horizontal and whenever you need to shoot vertical, just use it through the menu and go that way. So the question I asked you guys at the beginning was why do you need a gimbal in 2024? And even though I am the first one who absolutely love a handheld look, a bit of shakiness never hurts anyone, especially when shooting with vintage lenses like the one I'm shooting this video right now or a cine lens, they are not stabilized and they're very shaky. So if you're not really a good ninja walker, you might need a gimbal from time to time. And the last thing you want is the gimbal to be super heavy and very annoying to carry around. So something like the Fatex Corp 2 actually comes in handy because of how light it is, because of how portable it is, and because of how strong it is. So if you do want to check out this gimbal, it's linked down below on top of the description. Thanks guys for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one.